When a user connects to an Azure subscription, he will use his identity that is his email and password. That identity was configured in the Azure Active Directory and a role was given to that user, a role like a reader, contributor, owner, and so on. So this is the case for a user. Now what about a machine? A machine that could be my CICD build agent or that could be another Azure service that wants to access another Azure service or resource. So for these cases, we would not typically use the email and password for certain user, but we should use another type of identity that is the Azure service principle, SPN. When we use service principle, we can give user or machine access to our Azure resources like the full subscription or a specific resource group or a specific resource like a virtual machine, a web app or a database. And with that service principle, we can give it the right access. We can say hey, this service principle can only read that from that resource group with the role reader or it can also create more resources in that resource group or in that subscription using the role read uh, contributor. The service principle could also have a limited lifetime that could be like one year, for example. So after one year, that SPN will be expired. For that here, I have this GitHub repo that contains all the commands that we'll be using during this workshop. So you can go to check it out from here. And then here I have my Azure subscription where I am the owner of this subscription. You, I need to be owner in order to be able to create the uh, service principle. Otherwise, I won't be able to do that. And I also need to be the Azure Active Directory administrator to, to do that. And in this demo, I'll be using the Azure Cloud Shell in order to run the different commands for creating the service principle. So first, I'll go to create the service principle that is called my app. I'll use here the Azure Cloud Shell in order to run the different commands. And I run my first command to create a service principle. And that is az ad to say Azure Active Directory, and then sp to say service principle, create for airbag. And this is the command we use in order to generate a service principle. And then I'll go to add another parameter, dash n, which is going to be the name of my service principle. And here I call it my app. Creating that. So the service principle at the end, it's a component that is composed of an app ID that is my, the ID of my uh, application in Azure Active Directory, and then a display name, the one that I have specified as a name, the name with HTTP, and then the password for that service principle. And in addition to that, I get here the tenant that I use in, uh, as the login user. So the service principle here is created in Azure Active Directory as an application. So if I switch back to my Azure Active Directory right here, so you can find it if you go to uh, search for Azure Active Directory. And from within here, if I go to my applications, app registrations right here, go to all applications, I should see here my app is now displayed right here with that same application ID. And here you see the message that says here my app um, actually, it was assigned their contributor role to the entire subscription. So if I go back to my Azure subscription right here, go to Access Control, AIM, then go to Role Assignments. From here, I should see all the uh, users and all the service principles that have access to that Azure subscription. And one of them is my app. So I can see here my app have the role contributor. So that is the role that will be assigned by default if I don't specify any role for this uh, service principle. So that is fine if you want to give your service principle the contributor role over uh, all your Azure subscription. But in more specific cases, what is actually more recommended is that you give uh, some more restricted access to only some resource, specific resource groups or specific resource. Next here, I will go to create another service principle, but with no any uh, role uh, assignment. So for that, I'll use another command, iz id sp create for airbag again. And then here I'll specify the flag skip assignment, so that will not give any assignment for it. And then I'll output uh, as a JSON, and I'll put the output inside a variable called SPN. So this new service principle is called my SPN, and that is also created in Azure Active Directory as a new application. So if I go here, uh, quit 
app registrations then go back to app registrations all applications i should see here my spn is now displayed right here but this spn doesn't have any uh, role in my in my azure subscription if i go to refresh i won't see it because i didn't give it any uh, scope or any access to my subscription now we'll go to give it access so I need actually this app ID, the name, password, and the tenant of my uh, service principle. I don't want to go to use copy paste. That's why I have used the uh, SPN environment name here. And what I can do now is that I can do eco SPN uh, JQ. JQ is a tool that will help you to work with uh, JSON queries and that will display the service principle in JSON format. Then what I can do, I can go to eco SPN with, and I can specify only to show the dot app ID. So that will show this value right here. So I'll use this feature in order to extract the app ID, password, and tenant in my next examples. So now this SPN that I have created here doesn't have any role and it doesn't have any scope defined. And now I want to give it a role and a scope. So for that, I'll go to create a new role assignment. I want this SPN to get access to only one of my resource groups in Azure. For that, when I go here to my Azure subscription, go to resource groups, here I have multiple resource groups. I'll go to choose one. Let's choose this one here, SPN Demo 2 RG. For example, I want to give it access to only this resource group. So I need the ID of this resource group. I can find it in properties window, where here I have the resource ID that defines access to that uh, resource group that contains the application, the subscription ID and the resource group name. I'll define this into a variable called scope. And then I'll use the command az role assignment create with the role contributor. Then we specify the SPN ID with the flag assignee right here where we extract the app ID of my uh, SPN. And then we go to specify the scope, which is the variable scope that I have created earlier. And now I get my role assignment already created. So now that SPN have the role contributor over my resource group. So if I go back to the resource group, go to overview or actually access control from here, go to role assignments. And then I find my SPN now have access to my resource group as contributor. And if I go to another resource group that was not assigned in that role, or like demo uh, three, for example, here, if I go to access control, role assignments, there is no my SPN defined here. It's only my app because that one have access to all the uh, resource groups inside my Azure subscription. And the, uh, the role is uh, inherited from that subscription. So I don't see here my SPN that was assigned only to my resource group number two. That means all the resources here inside that resource group will also get the same role. So if I go to my web application, access control, then role assignments, I should see that inherited my SPN. So the role assignment that we have created here is assigned only to one resource group, but you can also assign it to other resource groups or other Azure uh, resources. You can also add a lifetime for this uh, role assignment or for even the uh, service principle to say it should be valid only for one year, for example. After that one year, you can go to uh, update the credentials and that will give you another password that you can uh, use it to reuse or to continue using that uh, service principle with that ID. So what we have done here with the, uh, with the command line could be also done with the Azure portal for assigning an access to one of the resources. So I'll go here to, for example, one of my resource groups. I'll go to my resource group number three, for example, go to access control, then go to role assignments, add role assignment. And from here, I can add a new role assignment. I'll say, for example, I wanna add the role reader for this resource group, and I can choose user group or service principle. And that's what I'm gonna choose right here. So I'll go to look for my SPN, and here it is. Now I can find my SPN right here, select it, hit save, and then that, uh, access, my SPN would have the role reader over this resource group. So if I go to role assignments right now, I should see it right here. 
with the role reader. So the service principle could be used to give access to other employees, users, or machines to my Azure subscription. And with that, with that service principle, I can use it to authenticate and to authorize, actually. So let's see a demo how, on how that works. So from here, I go to clear out this window, and then I'll go to use AZ login. So when using just AZ login, I can log in with my uh, with my personal identity, that is my email and my password associated with the Azure uh, subscription. But what I can also use, I can use that service principle to authenticate to my Azure subscription. So I'll do here az login, then dash dash service principle to say I want to log in with the created service principle. And then I can provide the name of my service principle, the one that I have used it before, and then provide the password and the name of the uh, Azure Active Directory tenant right here. And here now I'm uh, authenticated using that SPN. And here, if I try to run az group list dash o table to show the resource groups that I have access to here, I can see only two resource groups. And in my Azure subscription, actually, I have multiple resource groups here, but I don't have the other, I cannot see the other resource groups because that SPN doesn't have access to those resource groups. It can only see demo two and demo three. So here I'm connected as the service principal. Now I want to connect back to my Azure subscription using my personal identity right here. So I'll use again the command az login. And here Azure is asking me to use this code in order to uh, authenticate again. So open that in a new window, provide that code. Next, provide the identity. And here it tells me I'm authenticated again to my Azure subscription. So here if I run again az group list dash o table, I can see all my Azure subscriptions now displayed here. Now this SPN that I have created contains the app ID and the password. It means anyone of you can get this SPN, use it to authenticate to my own Azure subscription, and that is a security uh, threat right here. So I need to delete it. So in order to delete an SPN, we have a command to do that, and that is az ad sp delete. Then we provide the ID of that SPN. That is here the app application ID. And here I did remove the role assignments. And if I go back to my Azure subscription, go to the uh, demo tool that have the SPN already assigned, go to access control, check if that SPN is still assigned. And here that SPN was unassigned in my, from my subscription. And if I go to the Azure Active Directory, go to app, app registrations, all applications here, it was also deleted from my Azure Active Directory. Azure Service Principle will add to the security of managing your Azure resources, but it still uses that password and the SPN credentials. We don't want to use passwords, actually. So maybe one of the responses for this problem would be using the Azure Managed Identity, which is like the managed service for the Service Principle. 